Good afternoon and welcome to part seven of building the DJI HG5 kit. And today we are going to do page seven of the instructions, which doesn't really amount to much, but there it is. Uh, if you want to see what it is, and it consists of two main castings, which one casting is the bulk of the body and the other casting is the boiler. Now I've uh, already done quite a bit of work on um, this. I've removed most of the flash using a combination of Christina's ubiquitous nail files which are very very good, uh, a sharp blade and some small needle files as uh, for all the other flash and I've done the same with this. Now this casting does need quite a considerable bit more work because if I hold it up underneath where the doors are you can see it's inset. Now those cast bits have got to fit over the cab if you remember from the last program we built this and they've got to fit over the cab so they needed quite a bit of work um, but as with all the other bits that I've uh, given you advice on check the fit that and this that and this keep going just check that it fits and when it just slides in nicely like that then you've done it. If you remember from the last video, it did catch a bit. So the cab is fitted to the foot plate and this has to fit over the top of it. Now, the major thing that you're gonna to have to do with these two bits of, these two castings, they, they fit together with one screw. So if you can see on the underneath, underside, here, there's a screw hole which takes a self-tapping screw. However, and it is mentioned in the instructions as well, these edge, edges may need material moving, removing to get the boiler to sit level. When assembled, place the, the boiler and the superstructure on a flat item to make sure that they're level. Well, to be honest, you need to do that before you even get to fitting them together. So as you can see, I've just, I've just put them together. There's a little bit of flash you may need to cut out and uh, fettle where the tanks are because there is um, a curved profile to get the boiler to fit. So We've got the boiler to fit and what we'll do is I'll put it on my work surface and hold it up if I can without dropping it. Oh, let's put it this way around. So you can see. And you'll see what the problem is. So there it is seated and if you can see underneath there is a gap between the smoke box saddle and the wood, which means it's not sitting level. And if I do that, you may just about be able to see that it rocks around the front of the tanks. So what you're gonna to have to do is you're going to have to remove some material to get it to sit down and it needs to be equidistant on either side otherwise the boiler is going to not be twisted so looking at the gap again it looks like you're going to have to move remove about a millimeter and a half worth of material on both sides to get the boiler to fit. Now, you've got a couple of ways of doing this. Um, and 
probably the easiest way is to use a sharp blade and a ruler to mark off what you need to remove and then use whatever medium you're going to use to remove it. But whatever you do, do it slowly because you do not want to damage too much the seating of the rear end of the boiler, otherwise it will show above the tanks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a ruler out of my um, out of my toolbox, uh, reposition the camera, and then I'll show you what how I'm going to do it. If you look at the casting carefully, you can see that there are some cutouts in it where the casting process has missed that particular bit and that is about the right amount that you want to remove. So using your steel ruler, line it up and then just do some marks across. Yeah, sorry, it's the afternoon and the sun has gone round and it's a little bit awkward. So we've do, done that side and we've still we've got the marks on the other side as well. It does help you the fact that the bit of the firebox and the boiler at the back is relatively flat so that it fits between the um, cast tanks. So And we've done it on that side as well. Right, so then just once you've got a, st a start, You can see that's gone through. And once you've got a start, then you can, you should just be able to bend it off. Now you can cut this off whichever way you fancy, but this is just the way that I do it. You can use 
circular saw in a Dremel, which I've done before, but um, you have to be very careful with doing that because if the blade slips, which it did when I was using it, I almost lost the top of my finger. Is that side done and that's all there is to it the other side is exactly the same uh, and I'll do that and then I'll just come back and fit the two bits together okay I've removed all the bits and as you can see now if I hold this up hopefully you can see it is sitting level it's not rocking and that's all you've got to do a few more things that you do need to do but that's all you need to do for the boiler what you have underneath you've got to drill three holes in the smoke box saddle and one hole in the back which secures the boiler to the uh, to the body um, I did these the usual way I drilled them out they've got witness They've got witness marks, so I drilled them out uh, one millimetre minimum and then 1.8 afterwards. And the body is similar in that there are three places on each side that you have to drill, and again, they were drilled out at least one millimetre using a drop of oil and then 1.8 and these are now this is now ready to um, move on to the next section which is section 8 one last thing that I do need to mention to you before you um, tackle this stage there are and you probably won't be able to see them but there are cast rivet detail in the body and also in the boiler and smoke box etc when you are cleaning up please be very careful about how you clean up avoid those cast details if you at all possibly can otherwise you will spoil the look of the, the casting um, although it shouldn't be too beyond the realms of fantasy to actually replace them if you have the cast rivets to or the uh, turned rivets to hand but it's best not to create work for yourself so be very careful when you clean these castings up cleaning this casting up took me an hour um, to get it to this stage and it's still not complete I'm going to do a bit more cleaning up once bit more bits are attached this casting took about 40 minutes to clean up and again I'm going to lean it leave it as it is until they're attached and we've moved on to section 8 where we start fitting the detail so that's it, section seven, very, very brief. Thank you for watching and we are almost complete. We've only got sections eight and nine to go. Section 10 is has got a few pieces on, so there's only really three more sections to go and the locomotive will body will be complete and ready for painting so thank you for watching and watch out for part eight coming soon